So Steve, I wanted to talk about processing and intaking books, and I see you got a bunch here. Why don't we grab a box yeah. right here? These actually just, just came into this. Awesome, we'll just grab a box and we'll head over here and you can go through what your guys' process is on how this works. <laughs> it's a bit more involved than you might think at first. We have to do initial first sort, is what we call it. We break it down by publisher. <clears throat> we do the major publishers, Marvel, DC, Dark Horse, Image, Valiant, IDW. And then we do indies. And then they get sorted onto these pallets over here. So as you can see, like this right here says image. Image. Every book on that pallet is image. And then what we do is when we're gonna work on processing image, we take all the image and we start to break that down into another first sort by letter. So spawn obviously in the S pile. And we have all you know 27 piles, we have count numbers separately as well. So we have 27 piles of letters that we break all of the images down into. And then after that's all done, then we have to go through it all over again and find sort by title, by issue. So when it's do you move complex. to the second sort? So you've done the first sort mm -hmm. uh, by um, uh, pro uh, publishers. Yep. And now we're gonna, now, how long is it before you head to that? Is it a number? It takes a long time. No, it's just basically like, all right, what do I wanna start processing next just to make listings from? Right. So right now we're actually doing Marvel. We got uh, like 400 longs of Marvel to process, and in that uh, station over there, you can see they're doing uh, Avengers or eight the A letters basically. Okay. So we're just starting from scratch, basically starting top of the alphabet. And so, Z. and so there, you don't se also separate them out by date, right? So nope. it mm -hmm. is from Silver Age or even Golden Age. Yep right through today yeah the year doesn't matter because we're trying to keep it in order because that's how we're going to end up processing it and also putting it away so for us the, the date doesn't matter as to when it was published okay so when do you, do you also then uh do a grading process yeah of like that gets done in the listing process during, which is what i do when you get to the listing process yeah okay so that's almost third or fourth so is there a sort after the alphabet <laughs> then they move to the they put them away in alphabetical order yeah so They'll bring it up front towards the office more. That's when I'll come out and grab, you know. Grab the box. I want to work on Marvel today, today, or I want to work on magazines or digests, you know. Whatever I kind of, it helps to try to manage the flow of where people are integrating inventory. And do you list five days a week? Mm -hmm. And about how many do you get through a day? Oh, that I know it'll vary. It depends on what it is. I mean, I guess Marvel and DC may be easier because of their. Yeah, it, it gets tougher when the book is not in the database already. In the database. That's what becomes oh, more of a process. Stand by, we're going to talk about the whole database the thing database. a little bit later. Yeah, that, <laughs> that, it's probably one of the big keys to his business, and we're going to get into it later on. Yeah, so when it's not in the database, then it's like a very slow process of yeah. like... You have to then you add, add it, it you to gotta the database. You got to analyze, and, okay. But every one you the add, then, then it's there it. for the next time, right? It is, and then it makes right. it easier next time. But, you know, you got to focus on selling points. You got to focus on, obviously, writer, cover artist, artist, publication date, all the, you know, the meat and potatoes of, like, why, you know, what people want from that book. From that book. And then you got to figure out... It's nice if there's something also, like, a selling point on top of that. Right. So, First appearance, death. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. I try, I try we, to do that stuff at home and kids are sleeping, wife's sleeping. It's like, you know, I got a little time to just yeah, So you'll take, take like my, a little stack, time. stack home of yeah. stuff that's not in the database and that's yep. where you'll do it. So yeah, this, I like to this is no out. eight hour a day job. Oh, no. 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 <laughs> We're going to get into that too no. a little bit later. Uh, but yeah, I know. And it's, uh, everybody says, oh, we're working five days a week. Uh, seven, <laughs> seven. Cause if we're not, we're, we're probably at some comic convention yeah. or somebody's yeah. yard sale or flea market. We're going to talk about, um, sourcing books yeah. uh, later on too. So actually, so in this station right here right now is we have one person who is breaking down stuff based on size. So oh, we're wow. doing digest stuff that are down here. We have magazine size stuff, we have oversized stuff behind you, and then we have comic size stuff over here. And that's just because when we file this away, digest stuff and oversized stuff and mag stuff get put in different places than comic size stuff. Right. Um, so we can't sort this in, if there's a Marvel book here, we don't want to sort this Marvel oversized in with the Marvel 
copies of just because makes sense. It, it would take putting it away. It would take way longer to put it all away. And how long have you been working on this process? <laughs> uh, well, a long time. A long time. Thirteen years full time. But it's. But uh, I also got whipped into shape by one of my, or a couple of my employees, mostly uh, Joe and Mackenzie, because you know I would put everything away. You know, I know where it is. I know what it is. But they're like, that's how I run my shop. I know where the comics are. Where this is, or you know, if it's a hardcover or a soft cover. So like, and then I'm like, well, how how do you not know that? But you know, it slowly sinks in. Wait, not everybody just studying comic books their entire life. So you know, they whip me into shape as far as organization, because otherwise this place would probably be way messier. (laughs) So uh, let's take a couple look at a couple of books here. Uh, I, I happen to notice, but I kind of cheated a little bit. I, I ca- kind of noticed a couple of books. I, I Everybody knows that I'm a huge fan of 80s and 90s indies. And so, all right, so this is uh, this is Aardvark, um Neil the Horse. Now, is this going to go under Aardvark? Publisher? You, you mean or, the publisher? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. When we, when we file it away. When you do it final. When but we file it away, it'll go under Initially, it'll go in random... Initially, it would go in indies. In, just, just in indies. Just indies yeah. So most of this box is kind of just be indies. Mm-hmm. So this was, uh, everybody knows, it's one of my favorite books of all time. Mike Grell's John Sable. Actually was a television show. Doesn't make the wor- book worth anything more. It <laughs> no. was not a it's bad, tough to move, it wasn't man. a bad show. Tough to move. It is tough to, tough to move. Grell doesn't get, I don't think Grell gets his due. I don't, ooh, Racer X, There's, that's starting to get, I mean, I don't know if that, might be the third or fourth volume, but Racer X television shows coming out. Some Warrior's Way, some, oh, some Comico stuff. Elementals, I'm a big fan. That's a good read. Yeah, some uh, earlier Dark Horse, Homicide, Fawns, first six pack. That was, uh, got a lot of good stuff in there. Some more John Sable, there's gonna be some Badger in there. Samurai, some more John Sable. Thoughts? Oh, here we go. Here's some early Comico. Now you pointed out something this to me earlier. Um, here we got Scrog and Slaughterman. And you know, as as goofy as some of the people, the art is really good. The the female, the pinup art on there is really good. But what he pointed out to me on the back is an advertisement for the Grell number one. So. People out there that are chasing ads for uh, stuff, you never know where you're going to find it. Um, Grendel. 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 What did I, what did I say? Grell. You're Grell. stuck in John Sable mode. Uh, yeah, I'm stuck in John Sable mode. Yep. So Grendel. Uh, so that's that's pretty cool. We'll maybe do a little close-up of that. Right there. So. Well, then I didn't damage the book, and uh, <laughs> I owe you 100 bucks. <laughs> So hey, we got uh, change of scenery, and we're going to talk about uh, so how many about how many listings sell a week for you out of the six different platforms. You don't have to give me yeah, each no, breakdown, but a total. Uh, I think I meant I measure it more in like number of comics. So okay. Because I mean, you know you can have a listing for for one book, or you sure. can have a listing for like 120. Uh, so like I think it's about one and a half to two long boxes a day going out. A day. A day. Yeah. So. On average, bagged? and that includes. That includes uh, Saturday and Sunday too. So that's bagged, bagged and boarded. Depends on the the book, you know, because we sell bulk lots as well. They're not getting. So you'd say two fifty to six hundred. I mean, uh, oh, oh, I get you. Five hundred to six hundred. Yeah, probably about six hundred ish. About six hundred. Five to six hundred books. Right, seven days a week, twenty three hundred dollars, twenty three hundred books. So you're you're feeding the monsters. It's just like yeah, we have a a very healthy appetite now of, of needing to source new inventory because. We need to replenish. We need to replenish. I want to keep the listings on the uptick, right? Rather than the downtick. Downtick. Yeah. Yep. So, and so you've got. We talked about it a little bit before that um, the you have dealers that are bringing you books and mm-hmm. selling you books, and mm-hmm. yep. so your, your sourcing is at uh, probably an all-time high. You're never. You're not turning anybody away. No, so, no. Well, as long as the price is well, right. Uh, sometimes, sometimes it gets the full back there. We actually, Joe and I, just made a lot of room yesterday because it was getting unruly and I, we needed to make some room because I have three different dealers trying to sell me stuff. Yeah, so. I see you've got a seat container. Yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> Side for extra. I, there was a deal that came up and I was like, I really don't want that deal. And yeah. uh, 
you know, so I had to buy a container. Six six thousand square feet warehouse, and we're, yeah, we're now adding adding on already. That's that's yeah. fantastic. So I that's bought a container, and then I called the engineer. I said, "Hey, let's talk about expanding the warehouse, so I don't have to be keeping right. them in a container." Yeah. So we, we moved over to uh, where he uh, shoots. Uh, so is this for uh, shooting your listings? This is for manual listings, yep. Okay. Um, I ended up handing off the manual listing creation to Joe. Okay. So I can just focus on making listings through the comic base system. Um, so he's doing, you know, I was doing both. It's just, it's just not enough time of the day. No. So I got to hand that off. Then he handed it off, um, you know, a lot of the shipping uh, aspect to Mackenzie at the time. Uh, she's been here for years as well. She's great. She has a very good understanding of how everything works because she came in from the ground up. She, ground up. She was, you know, sorter than you know. I think she did some packing, but she did everything, so she knows all of it. So right. She's good to have around. She's great. She, you know, can manage people while he and I are just doing our things over here. So it, it, having key people and and people that you know. Yeah, it's really um, important. We'll, we'll actually move show your business up forward too. Yeah, <laughs> uh, it's super important. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it could it couldn't happen without them. Right. So, uh, once he makes, uh, does that become part of your data, database? Once he makes a manual listing? No, no, man. Uh, no. Manual listings. We actually so eBay discontinued support on Turbo Lister. Right. He figured out how to get all those listings out of Turbo Lister onto eBay in their inventory section. Okay. Okay. So now we still have all this stuff that. I had been creating for 15 years, you know, listings. It's just saved uh, in our eBay. Uh, On the eBay dashboard account, already. dashboard, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we can still access all those old listings now, um, update them if needed, you know, when we get it in and, and you know, put it up for sale. So when he's doing these, they're lost? Like, they, it's a one-off? So if he, he creates an individual listing? So if, you, if one's not in the database already, right. is that what you're talking about? Yeah. yeah so, so he'll add it to the inventory. Okay. So that we're storing storing it for storing forever. Now, and you're able to pull that back off eBay to list yeah. it on all yeah, the Yeah, it's under their inventory section. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, being able to save your work and save, you know, so you're not doing the same thing over right, and over right. again is crucial. It's yeah. So important. So, you know, thankfully he was able to, to glean all that information off of the Turbolister file and import it into to eBay. So yeah. we don't have to redo all of that work, you know. 30,000 listings. It's a lot. It's a, a lot. lot of work. Yeah. It is. We uh, we come here. If, if it's an old listing or a new listing, we update the photo with whatever you know the new set is. That's what this is done here, and then uh, eventually wind this way to him, and he makes this thing up. Yeah, because I know. I I mean, with my small shop, I had at one point <laughs> only I had 1,500. I moved all the way up to 1,500, almost 2,000 listings at a time, and uh, man, it was for us a Herculean task. It was oh, it's, just. Yeah. It's just Black. crazy for our small shop. Um, with it's not also having... hard to grow. So like, all right, once you right. get to like two thousand listings and a bunch are selling. Yeah. Well, then you start getting more sales, and yeah. then your numbers are coming down, and you're having to then. Yeah. How do you maintain how do I push it past? Yeah. And pat, push past that. That part is challenging. There's some days where I I cannot make the progress against what left. What sold? Yeah. 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 And that's kind of yeah. kind of discouraging for me because I want to see it moving Constantly, forward every yeah. day. But uh, yeah. So, did you ever think about uh, all the sales data and everything that you're collecting it has some value to the rest of the world, where you might have yeah, a, yeah, a way of who, you know who do I offer that to? Right. Um, you know, do, do, do I send it? Do I try to sell it to Overstreet? Do I partner with the price tag that are online? I, I don't know. I, I don't necessarily. I don't know if I place too much value on it. You know, I get people that every you know uh, weekly basis. Why is it? Why is the price this? The price guy says it's worth that. Right. All right. Well, go find it for that price. Price. Sure. You, know, you won't find a listing. Yeah. Like, as I'm saying, so the book's not even available. Yeah. yeah. Right. The price guy data is outdated. The day it's the day it's published. Before it's even before yeah. it even hits the printers. Yeah. So I'm not. I mean, maybe I'd be interested in sharing that information at some point, but it's not on the forefront of what I want to accomplish sure, today sure. or this year. I, I think it's really got a lot of value. I, I, I mean, obviously, I mean, to you, it's you use it every day. I do, and actually, I store that data. So if a book sells for over $10, I actually manually save it. Uh, I, I write down the date, I write down the condition, I write down the price that it sold for. Right. And it, a couple things. So internalizing that data in my own mind 
helps me remember when I'm out there picking. Like, oh, do I know this is a good right. book right here. Right. Um, it also lets me engage that person saying, well, the price guy says it's worth this. Right. Okay, well, my sale from, you know, April 20th of this year says it's worth this. You know, right. Oh, I didn't, I didn't realize that. And, that. and that's some of what it is. It's just they don't, there's so little data on some of this stuff that they don't know what it is worth or should be valued at. Right. So to have that in my pocket to say, here's actual sales data versus right. whatever a guy's telling you. And what, what, another thing we've talked about is uh, about uh, the listings is um, like sometimes when I, I'll have like either I made a mistake when I was ordering or it's just a book that comes in by the tens, like in everybody's collection when it's in there. Mm -hmm. So I'll have 10. I'll list all 10 in one listing. Mm, mm. And, and, that's a, and, that's and, a cardinal sin. Right, yeah. right. And yeah. uh, I stopped doing it because of your advice. I think it's really important that people, you know, hear about this. Is that sure? So like, if why not of to Superman do that? 500? Yeah, probably have a couple of them on hand. <laughs> yeah. I like to only make one available copy at the time. It, it gives me the chance to pause and reevaluate the price, especially in today's culture where right. the book heats up from. Two dollars to fifty dollars overnight. Overnight. Yeah. yeah. So if I listed, okay, I have, I have long boxes of that book, and let's say it took off for some reason, and I had all oh, you know six hundred copies of it listed They'd for sale gone. at a dollar ninety nine. Yeah. They're gone immediately because the community is just so active now on this yes. on the news like that. So it gives me an opportunity to reevaluate. Uh, on the on the eBay side, continually putting that thing back up for sale at sold. It, it, it's advantageous for your account. account. Okay? You don't the have an old listing right. that has had several sales on it, but it's five it's years still, old. It's still, yeah, it's still <laughs> okay? an ancient listing. Yeah. You want to keep things fresh on these marketplaces to help your metrics. Okay, and, and that's something that I didn't know at first either. Like I said, a lot of this stuff you just learn on the fly. Right. So I used to put everything up available quantity, and I would see that you know, the listing's two, three years old, and nothing's happening with it. Right. You know? and, and then I, and then I and noticed, you know it's a book that's selling. But then I also noticed, like, this other guy sold it. Yeah. Or this guy sold it, because I would still be looking up sold sure. history. So then it's like, all right, let's take it down and put it back up, and then it sells. Okay, so, so having new inventory is valuable for your metrics from these other marketplaces. Right. And, and that's some of the frustrating part of selling online, is you have this third party in the way between you and the buyer right that is influencing things okay so when you're searching for something on ebay the default search engine is best match it's right. not price it's not um condition it's none of that it's right. best match right so what's in their best interest is to push the buyer towards a seller who is going to ship on time who is, has really good feedback right um, and all these things are important, and, and those are things that I had to learn the hard way. Like I remember arguing with, with buyers, and they're like, "This has a this has a, a a crease in it, so it's a good copy." And I'd be like, "Like no, a good copy would be like missing a chunk from it." I'm, so I'm going back and forth with them, <laughs> right. just like, yeah. You know, and and also like I was you know I was hungry for business. I, I needed to make to keep every right. cent that I had uh, sent out. Sure. So I, I uh, you know sending refunds was painful at the time. But my feedback starts getting dinged. Seller was you know, unreasonable or right, whatever right. it may be. You know? Yeah. You know, and, and then that, the whole the whole time where people were kind of, before they stopped it, where people were um, holding you hostage with, oh, I'm going to yes. give you a bad yep. review yep. if you don't give me a partial refund. Sure, yeah. Um, which they've kind of... They got rid of that. They kind of got rid There's of that. There's goods and bads of that. But the overall is, is the feedback plays into how they view you as a seller and, and right. that's what's important. And, and yeah. it took me a bit to realize that too. It's like, all right, so I'm gonna start working on, on customer service, you know, right. that aspect of it, not being like the, well, you see the, you know, the color, the, the grade well, actually, actually allows for this, this and that. You know, I'll do that here and there, but uh, you know, on the, uh, the, on the average one, I, I really just try to say, what would make you happy with this transaction? Let's right. just, let's get to that point. And, and that sets the bar for like a compromise or partial refund or return, whatever it may be. Let's get the customer happy with the transaction so that my feedback doesn't get dinged, which then you know starts to have a negative effect on the whole business. Right, so what's your marketing strategy um, as far as, mm -hmm. do you allow that, just the algorithm to handle it or do you have any, do you send things out with your- that's kind of, Well, that's kind of my marketing strategy is just to be a really good seller on that platform. Right. Okay, have a huge selection, be very responsive to questions, um, 
be very responsive to problems that the customer right. has with, uh, with their order. Uh, and and that's really it, because that, that will allow the marketplace to just start to push you. Right. Towards but you don't send anybody like to bring back repeats. So I do, and, and part of that was because of it's time, it, when you have that many listings, it's time consuming to attend to offers. Right. Okay. You're getting you know, in, hundreds of offers a day, potentially. Look, I, I, I had a hard time doing it and I had it 1500, you know, mm -hmm. so, um, I, like I said, it tops 2000 and I was having a hard time keeping up with offers and multiple offers when a book got hot. Mm -hmm. Right. And yep. then like, uh, the, the first, as soon as you would list it, there'd be somebody like trying to cut you. Like, sure. Yeah. Immediately. They, Cause they want to put it back up before they even get it. Right. Yep. Right. So yeah, there's so, a lot of that. eBay has a nice thing that allows you to have a promotion that if they buy X number of items, right. you get an X percentage Some off. off. Yeah. yeah. So, so I set that up, and I kind of try to automate the system. Like, right. hey, look, I'll give you five percent off, ten percent off, but if you just do this, and I explain how they add the items to the cart, you right. add that cart button for nine items, and I'll automatically get a twenty percent discount. Okay. So I start to include that in message in my counter offer to them. Okay. Inform them. Let's not waste time with this offer process. Back okay. and forth. You're automatically going to get 20% exactly off. Exactly how you can get, yeah. Here's, a, here's how you get it. And if they keep coming back, it's like, I'm, I'm not going to be going lower than the promotion. So there's right. no sense in us going back and time, forth. Going back and forth. Yeah. Right. So I still get a ton of offers every day, but I can see in my uh, return customer right. percentage that it works that a lot of these customers know, all right, I'll just go there, I'll pick up my nine or more items, I get my 20% off automatically. Right. I'm not gonna, they're not gonna waste their time waiting for responses from us as far as counter offers go. Can you see how many people have made you a favorite? Uh, yeah, they call it followers on yeah, okay. eBay. I think right. we have It used to be fa favorite, like, like saved favorite. I, I think it's. But now it's followers? They, they call it followers, yeah. Okay. There's like 5,000 on there. That's, yeah. that's nice. That's not that's, nice. that's great. Yeah, that's cool. I don't really know how much it gets you. Like, I don't know if they're sending emails out every day, like, oh, right, this guy listened to this today. Yeah, maybe they do. So, well, one of the easiest things is you can click on your favorite seller, and it'll show you what they they listed today. They, they have that. It, it gives me the ability to send them a newsletter. Right. And that I don't. I don't do. I probably should. Should. Sure. Yeah. So, you know, marketing wise. I'm not doing. I'm not doing as much as I should be doing. So you recently got into new comic books, um, mm -hmm. and yep. you know I just did a show on um, how to uh, set up uh, your your um, your accounts with the three companies. Yep. Um, how did you find that uh, going on with? Uh, who was the easiest? I feel like they're all pretty easy. Pretty easy. Yeah, it didn't seem like a, that uh, tough of a process. Yeah. The, uh, the, There's now, like a lot of the, online application. The you online application. Have your, 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 your information. Your and your yeah. information ready to go. But if you have that. Yeah. Now, did uh, Lunar or uh, Marvel make you put in an initial order with mm -hmm. your... So Diamond makes you create an initial order and they have a minimum. I don't remember. This is all recent history too. Right. I, I probably should remember, but I, I okay. don't... Uh, I do remember doing the initial with Diamond. And actually, if you miss your initial at any month with Diamond, they're like... You still like, comics? What's yeah, going on? What's going on? yeah. Are you still? Are we still in business together? Yeah, is it? like, uh, what's going on? Yeah, because I did that once. It totally slipped my mind. Um, it's happened to, put to that me. In. It's happened to me. And, and they'll take it by paper. You can actually send it in. That you can't put it online. You can't go into the computer. Right. Put it, but they'll send you a sheet, and you can fax that in, and they'll they'll hand. To me, I'll just like you know what? I'll just do the FOC for these weeks, and uh, I, I told them that one time too, and they're like, "Are you sure?" And I was like, uh, "Well, I'm sure they get people that forget to do the FOC." Right. So. In their mind, they're like, he's going to tell us that and then not order anything. Now, I never forget to do Diamond's FOC. I forget to do, because they're on different days and the days are not, what work well for me is Lunar and Penguin. Mm -hmm. And you really, like Diamond, it doesn't change. If you do the FOC on 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 uh, the, the week, the Tuesday when it first comes out, mm -hmm. it doesn't change from then till the Monday. Right. You can still make changes, but it doesn't change. It seems like... The penguin and the lunar actually changes in that last week, all the way up to the last day, and I and I've had some some issues with it. Yeah, because of that, I try to get my FOC in on Friday, which, like you said, scheduling wise, it, 
it's tough though. You might right. have other stuff going on that day, but yeah, especially at the shop, a, it's a big day for us. There's a lot sure. of stuff going on. That's got to so. just be part of your routine for that Friday. Friday, it, it, it is. I'm gonna have seats. to get. I'm gonna have to work it in there. Um, and then what? Um, on the new comic book strategy, mm -hmm. um, do you do you have anything mm -hmm. you want to talk about about where you're where you're moving with with that and what you might be doing in the in the future? Yeah, I mean. It's funny to have a business called Cyberspace Comics and not have a website. <laughs> it's still. Um, that's another thing, I think you mentioned it too, is when you're picking your name, that there's so much now, there's so much to be concerned about right now. You gotta run that by, like you said, social medias. You yeah. gotta see, does this exist already? You know, and, and if so, am I stepping on somebody's toes? Like, so it, my, when I initially changed my eBay handle to something that was comic related, uh, I changed it to Coliseum of Comics. And then I was like, ah, let me just look it up. And I'm like, oh, there's a whole franchise of stores in Florida called Coliseum of Comics. So right. my wife suggested Cyberspace Comics, and I was like, oh, that's way better. It's cool name. <laughs> it's way better than I came up with. So, But before I change it, my eBay handle. Let me it, check. Let me start looking things up. And, and at the time, there was nothing like Twitter to be concerned about. Right. Um, well, maybe there was just unbeknownst to me, but right. but it's super important now to be like, all right, can I get the website? Can I get this handle right. on everything? Because you want to have that uniform. Yeah. You don't want numbers in your name. You don't want special characters like hyphens or underscores. Uh, and you want it to be about what you're selling, right. which is tough when you have to pivot like, like you. Right. Um, yours is an umbrella type of term. But you know, for me, I knew I just want to sell comics. So cyberspace comics and, and that's it um so alliteration helps too yes yeah um that always it's that, that's, double stan lee, that's a stan lee trick all of yes. his uh seek identities are humans love alliterations yes they love it of course uh there's a there's a whole uh in the comedy the science of comedy they call it if you say this uh words that start with p and f three times anything said three times can be funny but p's and f's specifically when said three times are make people laugh okay. uncontrollably for, for not uncontrollably, but like they can't control not laughing at it. Right. It's, it's weird. So it's just an alliterations. That's a, that's a, just a psychological thing that humans just are drawn to it. It just fits. It really, it, it just makes sense. Yeah. Something about it. So yeah, if you can do something alliterative, making it easy for them to remember. Yeah. Is important too. Yeah. So. Good luck out there, because everything's taken already. So <laughs> you find out. I mean, you know what I mean? Like it, it is. It's it got to be so challenging now to come up with all tremendously this stuff. because there's all people that are like uh, out of business now, and that name is right, still, it lives on the them. internet forever. Yep. Like somebody bought Haven for Heroes the uh, .com forever ago, and it just sit, they just have it parked. Oh, that was me. For sale. You open up. <laughs> Buy that up. Buy that. Right charge up. him a premium. <laughs> so. I think it's really difficult to drive people to your own website. It is, and that's the challenge that I'm going to try. Right. Uh, the initial thing was okay. Well, if I have a website, I gotta have everything, new issues, right. you know, whatever's just came out, in addition to all the backstop. So, you know, so you'll be moving into a subscription, possibly uh, subscription. That, that's probably a ways out because right. that's a whole other programming headache. But uh, possibly. Um, initially, I just want to be able to have the selection. Right. So I'm going through Diamond, Lunar, all that. I'm trying to order. So you're going to add a platform, of, right? You're going to have a platform well, yeah, yeah, I'll have added. The, sure. Yeah, another platform. So now you're website. at seven there. Yeah. I'm just trying to stock everything. You yeah. Know? yeah. My goal is to offer my buyers what, what I was looking for as a The team, ability to get what you want. Like, there's comic books out there that I just found out about, and I want to be able to get them all from one place. I, if I don't get a subscriber to order it and I have no, nobody has any interest, like I don't hear any talking about it, mm -hmm. there's plenty of DC books, especially now, I don't even order. Yeah, it, it's... And there's it's, some Marvel books I don't order. because the, the, the markup... I'm just warehouse. The markup isn't there. No. So for you to just be sitting on them... I don't have a way to turn sell. them like you're, like you're moving into it, the ability to, to, to turn that, those new goal, books. That's the goal, yeah. Yeah, so, so because of that, I would like to stop everything right and you know just personal goals you know yeah. trying to have you know one of the largest selections of back issues right in, in the country or the world uh is a it's a goal yeah that's yeah. why you need another warehouse out in the yeah. back yeah and, and and that's what caused 
the creation of this warehouse is we, we had this process now right by which we could start moving inventory but we didn't have the space now to take in a bunch more books right to make more listings for the book so uh, i uh, approached my wife i was like hey what do you think <laughs> about uh taking out enormous debt for a comic book warehouse and uh she signed up for that too <laughs> So we found this land here for sale and, um, you know, put out the engineering process and they came in and it took a long time. It took a very long time to, to get through every step, planning, uh, DOT driveways, sure. uh, town approval, a building itself, you know. You had and, a fun piece it, of property that was also commercial and yes, yep. in our area, sometimes not the easiest. Yep. Um, yeah. yeah. So that's, that, that was a heck of an undertaking while still trying to run the business. Yeah, it, it, it's it was it's distracting. Yeah. So it, you know, there's so much involved. It's with one meetings. thing buying buying a place that's already existing. It's mm -hmm. already or even renting a, a big warehouse that's yeah. already existing. You know, you either get a triple net deal or, um, you know, or just like a just a renter's kind of deal where you don't have to pay for any maintenance on stuff, but you uh, you, you are paying for the square footage. It's easy. Walk in, turn key, open the doors, and you're in. This, you know, you're, con you know, are they going to be a week later, a month later? Mm, you know, did the gravel come in? Yeah. Oh, it's like, but it, it's, it's also, it's such a distraction because you want to do it right. Right. So, you know, while I'm thinking, going to meetings and, and doing research and stuff like that, you know, what heating system do I use? You know, all that stuff. You, you would never even think that you have to think about it, but right. all that takes away from your actual business. Right. And I just wish I could have been like, all right, you know, the money's, the, the loan is out, the, the debt's there, but yeah. the building exists. I don't have to put the time into it. And time right. is the most precious thing. Absolutely. Because that's what you have. That's the only thing you have to help you grow that business. Yeah. Um, I'm just checking my notes here. Okay. <laughs> We talked about that as well. So, hey, I wanted to get into uh, what your prize piece in your personal collection is. Because mm. I know you keep a little personal collection. I, I have a, it's a, a large selection of Marvel comics um, that I read on a pretty regular basis. I know you said in your last episode that people don't read every day. And you're right, they don't. But, read every but, day. But, but you read, uh, some people try, read a lot. I try, I try to. I, I don't read as much as I, I would like to anymore because of the two jobs, but mm -hmm. uh, I try to read as much as possible. And, gotcha. and I really try to make readers out of, out of people. Um, if you own a comic shop, especially a local comic shop, and you're not reading, you're probably not doing it right. You're not doing it right. how can no. you recommend exactly. to your exactly. customer base, oh, you bought that, you like that? Well, you'll probably like X, Y, and Z. Exactly. That's the whole That's the whole business of a local retail comic shop. Right. Is get them into like, oh, you like that writer? Well, here's this writer who's actually even better than that mm -hmm. writer, but in the same genre. And right? that's why you I said like before, when we first started talking, I was like, if you don't like comics, this is this not, is not the business. business for you. This is not business. It is for me, it's all time. time. I love dream. comics because I, I love the storytelling. Um, when the writer and the artist have that real, you know, there's a lot of them you read and you're like, uh, I could read it and not look at the pictures mm -hmm. or I could look at the pictures and not read. Like, But then when those two guys are working like simpatico and yeah. it's just... A, the, it's amazing. It's the best storytelling. You can't get better. It's better than the movies. It's better than a regular novel. Uh, it's better than everything. Um, yeah. For and, me. And without that knowledge, you know, or yeah. the interest in, in, in reading it and, and knowing about it. It's like, what you, people, like a lot of, some writers don't understand is that if you tell me what the artist has put on the page, I, I don't know why right. you have a box telling me it's a dark, yeah. stormy night. He's drawn that. <laughs> That's some old Marvel especially during the Stan Lee era it's like there's uh, a few guys that still do it yeah but they, they've I feel like they've they've told people you can't do capture boxes anymore has, uh, to, has to all be dialogue there is less it's some indies you still get it but um the there was guys like I was never a Neil Gaiman fan as huge as like in the con in the comic world he's like he's like Shakespeare in the comic world but, but he came from a, a very just a literal world right where, where he right feels for me deep. it's it really felt like prose and art. Mm -hmm. There was art on the page, and then he just had a ton of prose. Right. And um, I didn't dig that at all. Now, when he's, whenever his stories have made it, been made into movies, I really enjoy them. The story is a really good story. Just I, in the format, I didn't like it in the format of comics. Mm -hmm. um, and it does have its own, the, the medium has its own, you know, certain things that are very 
uh, interesting just for the medium. Like right. you said, like, it, it only works in the medium suppose, uh, sometimes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what about dual writer books? When there's two writers on a book and an artist, I hate that. I, because each guy's trying to get his voice in there, and then the voice is tough. not. Yeah, it's it's, tough. it's really tough. I mean, and I've seen really great writers team up, and it's like hey, it's okay, man. Yeah, you know, it's a great idea. But you know, if you read the Guardians of the Galaxy from uh, Abnet and Landing, it's phenomenal. It's so good, and it's just two writers working together. You, right. You couldn't even tell. For me, I can't even say. You can't, oh, this you is can't one say or the this other. is no. one guy or the other. Well, I haven't seen that, so I didn't read that series, we'll read so I'm, I'm gonna have to read that. Which Guardians so, of the Galaxy? Uh, the initial... Volume 2? Yeah, Volume 2, the initial... When they first come to the present time. Right, yeah. okay. So for me, I, you know, grail-wise or whatever, I, I don't really look at it that way. I don't, like... The value, uh, of the, the dollar value that it's placed on right. comics doesn't for me doesn't enter like the meaning that it has to me what about like, yeah, historical cool. value there's there's historical value to it and i do have you know some cool books but it's really like for me it's yeah, like value wise placed on it of the guardians of the run that i just talked about yeah like that's such a good read like it's almost worth more to me than like amazing right. spider-man number 17 because i, I enjoyed I, the story more. i tell people all the time i said uh if you saw my collection one it'd be worthless because it's <laughs> creased and bent and 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 you'd be like what are you reading you weirdo yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> but and and that's I all, love it. like for me that's also like some like a humbling point is like i'll put out there like this is such a good this is such a good read like as, at, initially that was one of my marketing things yeah but like oh we don't know who you are. We don't care what you think is a good read. Right, right. So, like, the stuff that I think is a phenomenal read, like, it doesn't always sell. Can I tell you, it was like, we talked about YouTube and then the, the whole marketer reporting and stuff like that has moved the needle. But what I've noticed is that reviews of, like, the actual read and stuff mm -hmm. does not move the needle on sales, on, on, uh, on comics. It is a shame. You gotta have somebody that, that you trust their opinion. That's right. Kind of and that's the hardest thing. I think the only guy that probably moves that needle is Jim Comics. I, I, I see a lot of the books that he recommends, but he's also specking. But he genuinely specs on the books he like, but like mm -hmm. that he has enjoyed to read. Yeah. Um, I mean, specking is totally different than, than trying oh. to read. You, know, you gotta look for the hook and all that. Right. But reading, at, you know. You're just enjoying your own self. That's you know, right. There's, you there's, been a, out there. there's been a lot of really bad books that like have gone up in value and make me mad. Yeah. It's better books. So I mean, if you if you want to talk like what? Yeah, other people, grab a grab a book. Show me something yeah, good. This is probably my best book as far as as far as other people's valuation goes. Um, but if you want to ask what my own personal one favorite is, I don't. I don't necessarily have. I have like, one. see, this, this kind of, oh, can I touch, yeah, you? Can I touch it? it? This is, this is a really, this displays really, really well. All complete. Yeah, it looks pretty good. There's a tear in it. Yeah. Well, a tear, I, like, that's nothing on a book like this. So, yeah. four? Uh, yeah, I think I could get to that. Four? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It, the cover is just fantastic. I mean, the colors are nice dark. There's a little bit of rub here and there, but like it's, you just don't see these, man. I have never saw one. I mean, I had the closest I had was uh, Spider-Man 2. Uh, I've never, yeah, and I've, uh, 181s used to come around all the time. Mm -hmm. I don't see them as much anymore, but, um, but yeah, nothing, nothing this important. Uh, and, just such and an to iconic me, cover. That, that is the fun of a book like that is, is the, the cultural relevance of it right um of the you know of this specific book if you want to read it you know you can obviously just get a reprint right is, that's that's fine too you, know, you can still partake in the, the relevance of it through you know they have facsimile copies now which is really nice it's a great way to own and read that book it is that's such a you know today it's an important piece of pop culture yeah i i i love the facsimiles when they come out i like them much better than the true believers yes yep um you know, I guess that what they were trying to do is get people in at like a really low discount price. Mm -hmm. But the facsimile is really, you put it on your wall, it looks like the same. I mean, there's been... Plus the barcode. Of, yeah, the barcode. <laughs> it, yeah. it has the added barcode. But um, 
it really has a neat look to it, I think. The, the True Believer on the tie, I don't know. It just, just may be me. I mean, a lot mm -hmm. of people may love the True Believers, but... Uh, I mean, so for me, part of the fun of, of owning comics is, is, like, you almost have your own personal museum, kind yeah. of. Like, yeah, yeah. Of pop culture. Yeah, especially if you like the weird stuff that I like, because people are like, what? Ribbit? Yeah. Like, you own a ribbit? <laughs> I actually own multiple you own all four? <laughs> I own all four and, and I own multiple number ones. Because okay. I like, I'm a Frank Thorne fan. I mm -hmm. like Frank, Frank Thorne. I think a lot of guys haven't gotten their due uh, yet. And, you know, I think there's guys out there that are definitely in the 50 cent quarter dollar box. Galchi, is that how you say his name? G-U-L-A-C-H. He did a lot of epic books. He did a lot of like in that 80s. Oh, Glacy, I think? Glacy, is yeah, that how you say it? G-U-L. I've reached out to several of those creators um because i i feel the same way you, you do like how come they're not you know how come they don't have this fa the fan base that yeah, they should should have. deserve um but some of it's just they they want to do it on their own right they don't want to have to do company characters right they have their own vision and and they don't want to be bound by any company and, right. and the third party and the, you know that's the difference between an artist and then the business sure. type of person. Because I'm just like, dude, get your art out there. Like, it's, yeah. it's so cool. Do whatever you need to do to get it I, out there. I was just going through some boxes and I I found, like, you know, Boland. When you see a Boland Batman or Joker, mm -hmm. like, those books blow up. And mm -hmm. it's like, everybody's like, oh, Boland. Man, look at his Judd Dredd stuff. Which was oh, it's awesome, man. From awesome Eagle. Awesome stuff yeah. from Eagle. Yeah. And those books are quarter bin they're actually starting to, they're catching on. We're starting to move a little bit yeah and the number one goes for good yeah, yeah. I, I i hold on to a bunch of them yeah the number one i've seen like sell for around 25 and up uh steve waron is another one he's got amazing art and what, what did he uh if you looked up like his, the survivors survivors okay yeah, it's, it's art's incredible but i reached out to him i was like you know let me help you get something published or distributed right. or something like that i would love to, right. to do that because you are going to start doing you're starting well, doing I exclusives. Like to, right? I would you're like to do yeah, some exclusives. To, to, like you're saying, it's hard to get people to a website. Right. So I, I kind of want to see if I can get some of these artists to, to create some new stuff. You know? right. and, and that way I can give them a guaranteed purchase of the book. Right. I don't have to worry about a publisher saying, oh, I don't know if it'll get this many copies ordered. I can just say, hey, look, I'd like to order whatever. Yeah, I haven't figured out the, the, the number, number yet, but right. whatever that, well, that number may be and, 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 and stock your book. And let's get your stuff out there because you know some it's of it. It's a lot quicker than kickstarting, right? Kickstarting, uh, you have yeah, to sweat it. it. You have to do the whole world. And it, let me tell you, I know a lot of guys that's done the Kickstarter. Um, uh, David Pepos, um, who I liked his work early on, I you know would seek him out when I'd go to shows because he went. He does a lot of the conventions. Mm -hmm. He just got Savage Avengers. Congratulations, David. Um, and. Uh, I really liked his stuff, and he told it is a when you do a Kickstarter, it is a tremendous amount of work. Yeah, not only do they have to create the thing, right? But they have to put the whole Kickstarter Get it printed? thing together, put and, the whole kit together, and yeah. then ship it all out. And, and yeah, the marketing of it all and too. Yeah, it's 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 a lot. It's a so lot. if I you know my goal once the website comes out is, is to start to be able to help creators. That I feel <laughs> are deserving, deserving of, right. a, of a, a bigger audience, yeah. without the headache of having to deal maybe with um, a, a bigger publishing company, yeah, uh, or even a distributor. You know, I, I know dealing with some of the distributors can be challenging. Yeah. So if I can help that process for work that I think is is good work, uh, I'd love to be part of that. Right. So that's you know I, I focus. Or I said earlier that you always have to be kind of thinking of new things. Um, that's kind of what I want to step into next is helping indie creators get a larger audience. Yeah, I I, I wish I could be in that uh, in that same in that same realm myself. I'm not uh, creative in, in a in a artwork right. writing sense, but it, it, right. it would be fun to help aid those that are. Absolutely, because yeah. you know we want to see books we want to read. Yeah, too is like, and that that's a that's a big thing for me is. Uh, you know, I've talked about this a lot, uh, is just that some are not making stuff that are selling. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to recommend when the stories are weak or the art is weak or um, the continuity is all over the place. Yeah. And it's hard to follow the story and or weekend it. Like, I don't know if you follow the Red X story. No, it's DC. Yeah. <laughs> well, they... Uh, 
They had uh, the Red X ended up being this guy named Brick, who I don't even really know who he was. Um, oh yeah, that's, that's the and then thing. The funny thing was is that he's in the in the beginning. Uh, there's an art piece. This is a continuity problem. There's a piece in the beginning where the the Red X is putting on that, the, and Brick is in the foreground. Oh, okay. So, so who is that then? The mask is on. Sounds like a hobgoblin thing where they set you up to think it's a zillion people. Yeah, so I, I don't know. I think it was just a continuity mistake. They're like, oh, we need characters in the background. Mm -hmm. This guy was in the in the in the group, and maybe they didn't know who they were gonna make the guy. Yeah. Right. See, for me, I don't have to worry about that, which is kind of nice. You have to. Right. It helps if you can sell the product to the individual customer, but you know, for me, I'm just putting it up into and whoever likes into it into the cloud, and, yeah. and, and I know the orders. And we said there's just you know, there's an ask for every seat. Like somebody like will like the art on it, or somebody will like the story, sure, um, or a character. Sometimes, I mean, there were some books that I didn't love, love, but I love the character, one mm -hmm. of the characters in it. And I was like, well, I'm just gonna follow it, and hopefully he gets moves on to another his own book or or something, right. Um, that but, was me with the uh, Great Lakes Avengers. Great Lakes Avengers. Great Lakes Avengers. Who, Avengers who, who was the who was the one in the Great Lakes that you? I just like oh, the team. You just yeah. like the team. Yeah. When I was first getting into the internet, I was like, see, I was a DC guy, so for me, it was the substitute heroes of the Legion. Okay, yeah, right? I think they're, I love they're all on that. a very similar playing field. Right, right. <laughs> so you uh, and you know when DC did that Resurrection Man, do you remember that? that was pretty and that was a bunch of lame characters. They're like, hey, we're just going to throw them in here and then we're going to like tweak their powers, like their powers of change. That was Hero, right? Uh, H dash E dash. No, no, that was uh, that was Resurrection Man. And he had like a group of heroes with him. Animal Man was oh, one of the right. ones that yes. came out of that. Yes. And an then yes. the, Animal, the, Anima, the Animal Man series was really good when they like, they torqued up his his uh, abilities and stuff like that. And that even got a show. See, that's the, the stuff that I will read in DC. Right. And I'll read the little offbeat stuff. Because they, they, they do a good job with it. Like the Doom Patrol from Morrison. Yeah. The Swamp Thing stuff is always fun. Transmetropolitan. I haven't read it yet, but... Uh, oh, you got to give that a read. Well, when I say DC, I mean like their their universe. Right, yeah, right. So that's the stuff that'll catch my eye. Resurrection Man was, was a fun read. Yeah, yeah. Uh, even Manhunter was pretty fun too. Yeah, I mean, there was a lot of stuff during that time period when there was a lot of... They were bringing in a lot of offbeat writers that mm -hmm. like were from the independent world and... They were giving him a shot, but <clears throat> all right. I think I've taken up so much of your time. Remember, folks, if there's anything we left out, you want to know about the online business. Uh, we're probably going to break this into two, so you'll have seen two episodes. So, the, if you have anything, uh, Steve said he would uh, answer almost any question. <laughs> let's keep it clean and uh, let's keep it like not too personal. What was your W two last year, kind of thing. <laughs> so uh, yeah, uh, please put any comments in the in the comment section, like, subscribe, you know, all that stuff, and uh, most importantly, keep reading comics. <laughs>